you're here, the party can really begin. Megan, I'm sorry. When you called me, I thought we were going to get together for a quiet dinner together or something. I mean, too step thing over me. I really think I might bring everybody down hanging around here. Max, I called you because I needed your help. I promise you, this will uplift your spirits. What? Only the best acting role that an actor could ever want. Christine, I was just closing up. Please, it'll, it'll only take a minute. I need your advice. I, I told Mary Lynn I was going to be at this Christmas party for Fraternity Row. That's why I closed up early. Can't you be a little late? I'm already going to be a lot late. But I don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. What's the matter? I don't think Vicky's my mother after all. As you listen to me, you will relax more and more. Now, Victoria, this is your last chance. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Are you absolutely positive you can face the dark mysteries that are hiding in your subconscious? Very well, then I must warn you. I have no idea what hidden truths lie lurking in your mind, and I will not take responsibility for what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, you have before you a woman whose memory is like a slate. And many years are of joy and happiness, sorrow and pain are written there. But a portion of that slate is wiped clean. And tonight, I'm going to restore that portion with the power of hypnosis. Slowly and carefully, I'm going to draw aside the curtain and help this lady bring forth the knowledge she is so desperately trying to find. Knowledge that will help us find Eterna. Along with everybody else in this nightclub. What do you mean? If Lysander brings forth any of Vicky's Eterna memories, we're going to end up sharing that gold with everybody in here. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll be the only ones that will understand what she's talking about. Looks like he's got her under. Listen to me, Victoria. Let my voice guide you back over the years, further and further back. Back to the spring of 1963. And that secret that is locked deep inside your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, my subject is hypnotized and totally in my power. She's been in my power for 25 years. When she was 17 years old, her father came to me and asked to erase certain events from her memory. I do not know what those events were, but I was able to submerge them in her subconscious. Now, this brave woman wants to find out about those events which her father so desperately wished to hide. Thus, you see before you a woman who is under my spell and who dares to delve deep in the dark passages of her subconscious. I have got to stop this before Vicky reveals any of those secrets. Well, what are you going to do? You can't just go up there and interrupt them. I know. Look, I'm sure she won't remember every detail about what happened to her then, just enough to give us the clues that we need. Gabrielle, even one clue could be disastrous if someone picked up on it. Listen to me, Victoria. 
let my voice guide you into your subconscious into those memories that you will need all your courage to face courage yes listen to me very carefully in Lethe lies your past what is it what do you remember incredible pain, but a time of incredible joy and love. Where are you now, Victoria? I'm... I'm on a mountain near my father's cabin. No, 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 it can't be. I... I can't. Why is this memory so painful? You must fight that pain. You must draw on every ounce of your courage and trust your strength. I can't. Yes, you can. You must. Listen to my voice. Let it soothe and calm you. Let it ease the pain. Yes. Now go back to the mountain. See it in your mind, the trees, the grass, the hillside. Tell us what you see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Sit down, slow down, and tell me what, what this is all about. You heard me. I don't think Vicky is my mother. That's impossible. Your father, your father finally admitted it, and Vicky announced it at the wedding reception. Why are you doubting it all of a sudden? away in his things. What is it? Before I show you this to you, Wade, you have to promise me that you'll keep this to yourself. Whatever this is, it's going to stay within these walls. <laughs> Isn't this your dad? Yeah. But is that woman my real mother? I see where you're going with this. Christine, this is probably him visiting a friend in the hospital who had a baby. No, read the inscription on the back. Wilmington General Hospital, June 1963. Emily, Leo, and Christine on the happiest day of our lives. That's me, wait. And that woman is my real mother. You better go have a talk with your father and get some straight answers about this. Oh, and you think that's really going to help? What's he been doing but lying to me over and over okay. again? Okay, all right. You've got a point. Well, what else are you supposed to do then? I don't know. That's why I came to see you. I was hoping you'd help me figure this out. Time out, Megan. Time out. My acting days are over. So if you're looking for me to play your leading man again... Oh, no, 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 no. no. Actually, this part calls for a much older, more sophisticated, jovial character. Okay. One who's very good at going, ho, ho, ho. You want me to play Santa Claus? Mm -hmm. I can tell what... Our other Santa just canceled on us, and I knew that you would make the perfect replacement. Megan, I really don't think that's... A oh, Matt, please. Look at all their hopeful little faces. I promised them that Santa was going to be here. If he doesn't show up, they're going to be heartbroken. I would love to help you out, but I got a lot of other things on my mind right now. Well, this will take your mind off your trouble. Come on. It's a great idea for a party. I can't believe it. Uh, Ray, bye. I can't believe that Randy agreed to let you use the studio for it. Yeah, though. well, the crew got together and some of our friends and our spouses, and we asked Randy, and he said, sure. I guess he's a heart after all. Oh, well, I wouldn't go that far, but at least he finally made the right decision about something. Um, by the way, where is Wade? Oh, well, he said he's going to close up Angel Burger early tonight, so should he be here any minute? Mister? Hello. Down here, mister. Whoa. Hey, partner, what's with the long face? Santa isn't coming, is he? Well, I don't... I've been waiting for him. He's forgotten about me. What? Are you kidding? Santa Claus never forgets anything. You know, he's got a memory like an elephant. 
And you know what he never forgets? Bye. Visiting good little boys. Are you a good little boy? Yeah, well, then you've got nothing to worry about because... What's that up there? I hear reindeer on the roof. Yeah! Oh, you better round up all your friends until them Santa Claus arrive. What can I say? I'm a sucker for big innocent eyes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, the rest of that nifty little outfit is in the costume room. Yeah, how good is that? Who is that gorgeous guy with Megan? I don't know. But I think he'll fit perfectly into our plans. <laughs> Hello, Mary Lynn. Hi. Who's your friend here? This is Neil Delaney, the president of my fan club. You have a fan club? Well, of course she has a fan club. Mary Lynn's the best thing that's ever happened to Fraternity Row. Not if I have anything to say about it. Oh, everybody, this is Al Slap. Pleased to meet you. Al is an absolutely incredible PR man. I'm sure you've heard of him, right? No, actually, I haven't. That's because I take on only clients with promise. <laughs> Al is absolutely devoting himself to my career. That's right. And before I'm through, I'll turn her into the reigning queen of fraternity row. Wow. Studio with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Randy, is that you? <laughs> well, who'd you expect? Ebenezer Scrooge? Frankly, yes. What, are you kidding? Contrary to popular belief, I love Christmas. It brings out the kidneys. And, I might add, the baker. Look what I make. Muffins? Yeah. Blueberry muffins for Christmas. Would you care for one? Thank you. Uh-huh. Now, where is the star of the evening? Which one? Santa. Who else? I'm going to cut it. Merry Christmas! Let's line up around the couch so Santa can come in and say hello to each and every one of you. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas! Oh, what a pretty little girl in a pretty dress. What's your name? Brooke. Oh, Brooke. What would you like for Christmas, Brooke? Have you been a good little girl? Yes, and you like a doll? What kind of doll would you like? You know, that's one of Santa's favorite toys to make. But you know what? The elves, sometimes they start all of them talking at once, and Santa and Mrs. Claus can't even hear themselves think. <laughs> oh. All right, look out, kid. Move it. I'm coming through, OK? You mean your father never showed you a photo of your mother before? No. But you know, the woman he described to me, she looked just like that. What do you think I should do? Well, the inscription says it was taken at Wilmington General Hospital. I think next the best thing you should do is to go down there and check it out. To find out if I was really born there? Sure, hospitals keep records. And if your birth is on file there, that's all the proof, proof you need. Proof that my dad was lying to me again. That's what you're trying to find out, isn't it? I just can't believe this is happening to me. You know, first he tells me that my mother died when I was a baby. Then he tells me, no, that's a lie. Vicky's my mother. If that turns out to be a lie, I don't know what I'm going to do because I've, I accepted her. Well, if she... I love her. If she's not your mother, Christine. You better find out quickly because this thing could go in a whole different direction. You're right. I can't bury my head in the sand. I have got to clear this up once and for all. Where are you going? I'm going to Wellington. Now? Well, what's the use of putting it off? Besides, it's only a 45-minute drive. Okay, let me take you. You're too upset to drive. No, I can't let you do that. Why not? Because you've got that Christmas party to go to. This is a little more important than a Christmas party. Besides, I'd probably just stand around and worry about you. I might as well go along. Thank you. I could use the company. I could use the support. Okay, well, let me just call Mary Lynn at the studio and tell her I can't make it. Wade, you, she's... Don't worry about it. I'll... Something came up, that's all. Okay. I'm on the side of the mountain. I'm with my father. 
We're having a terrible fight. He's shouting at me, and I'm crying. I hate him for all the horrible things he's saying to me. What things? I, ca I can't remember. The words are too painful. But I'm running away from him. I'm running away from the cabin. Where are you going? Toward the mountain. I can't let this go on. No, any interference from us would just raise suspicion. But if Vicky reveals the location of a turnout, we're going to lose our chance to get to the gold before anyone else. Why are you running towards the mountain? Because that's where it is. Where what is? The, the place that my father wants to keep me from going to, but, but I keep going. And he's shouting after me to come back. But I can't stop. I must get there. Why? Why is this place so important to you? I can't remember. It's too painful. Fight the pain. Picture that place in your mind. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I see it. I see it now. It's... it's... Listen to me very carefully, Victoria. When I count to three, you will regain your conscious state. One, two, three. Vicky, come on. What's going on? Why is everyone running out? The fire alarm went off. Honey, I remember things. Why was I running from my father? Why, why was I running? We'll talk about it later. We have to get out of here. Where's my son? Forget my son. No. Oh, God. No, I need him. He's got to put me back on there. I have to get the rest of the pieces. If we don't get out of here, we won't be around to put the pieces back on. Honey! Oh, little boy, what can Santa give you for Christmas? Oh, come on. There, there. What can Santa bring you to turn that frown upside down? All they want is a mom and dad. Do you believe in Santa? Now, you believe me when I tell you that someday a mommy and a daddy are going to come along and they're going to love you and they're going to care about you as much as Santa does. Now, I can't promise when that day is going to be, but you have to keep hope in your heart and not lose it because that is going to lead them to you. Okay. I believe in Santa, too. Who's next here? Oh, me, Santa. <laughs> I'm the new girl on Fraternity Road. Oh. Santa. Do you know what I want for Christmas? An Italian sports car. No, I already have one of those. Oh, well, what can Santa bring the girl who has everything? A nice, juicy storyline. Something with, with love and, and, and romance and, and adventure. Yeah, well, if you want some adventure, why don't you go and get yourself lost? Why don't you butt out? I'm talking to Santa. Will you look at this long line of needy children? Now, just pack up this little act of yours and get out of here. We'll go wrap a present. You know, you have got to be the cutest Santa I have ever seen. <laughs> Goes with the territory. <laughs> May I give you a present? Well, now, that's a switch. Uh, what would you like to give Santa? This. Follow that pose. You'll be happy to know we didn't find anything. Checked out the entire building. You mean there wasn't a fire? Looks like a false alarm. I suggest you have that system checked out. Can I help you? Yeah, we were here earlier, but in the mad rush to get out, we forgot the lady's purse. It won't take long to find it. Sure. Well, Lysander wasn't in his dressing room back there, and he certainly doesn't look like he came through this way. Let's face it, he's vanished, along with our hopes to find the entrance to Eterna. Well, at least nobody else discovered anything thanks to that fire alarm going off. Yes, it was fortunate that the system malfunctioned. You pulled that alarm? Well, I had to do something to stop Vicky. Don't be angry with me. I sold the alarm. It seemed the best thing to do. No, oh, I'm not angry. How can I be angry with such a quick-thinking, intelligent partner? That was a brilliant move, Gabrielle. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're no closer to our goal than when we first walked in here tonight. 
just can't get over how Lysander Claire always seems to drop off the face of the earth. I mean, uh, at least he didn't go up and smoke this time. Thank God, neither did we. <laughs> okay? Oh, boy, I was so close to having all the answers. I was so close to uncovering all those memories that have been buried so deep inside me all these years. I know, I know. But I gotta tell you, I wasn't all that thrilled with the way he was taking advantage of the situation. I mean, you were up on that stage burying your soul, and he was making a big show of it. It was my only hope of finding out what happened to me 25 years ago. It was my only hope of finding out why I'm having these horrible dreams. It's what we came to New York for. Yes, I know that. But I don't think there's that much we can do here anymore. I mean, Lysander cleared out when that false alarm went off. We looked all around the club for him. He was nowhere to be found. So we might just as well go back home. No, no. No, there's, there's, there's plenty more we can do in New York. Like what? Well, like coming here to the White Lion Tavern, for instance. The White Lion Tavern? Oh, wait a minute. Is this the place you were telling me that you came a month ago looking for your daughter? Yes. I was hoping to jog my memory by visiting a place that Nikki had worked in. But it didn't jog your memory, did well, it? Well, no, I mean, it didn't work, not then. What makes you think this time will be any different? Because, honey, Lysander brought me right to the brink of the truth. And I remembered everything that I said up on the stage. I remembered about fighting with my father, running away from him. I remembered him running after me and shouting at me to come back. And I remember heading toward... toward a place, a place on the mountain. Oh. What sort of... I don't know, I don't know. It's the one piece of the puzzle that still eludes me. It's right under the surface of my memory. I know, I'm positive that once I can focus on that, I will finally, finally learn the truth about my past. Where was I headed? Why was I having this, this terrible fight with my father? Was it about this place he didn't want me to go to? I mean, why didn't he want me to go there? Why was he yelling at me, come back, why? Honey, I don't know, and I doubt very much that we're gonna be able to figure it out sitting in some bar in New York City. You're right. You're absolutely right. Why didn't I think of that? I'm not going to get any answers here. Let's go to the cabin. The cabin? Yes, the cabin. Why? Because that's where I had the argument with my father, and, and then I was headed toward the mountain, right? So? Well, this, this place in the mountain that I was headed to is obviously the key to this whole mystery. So we go to the cabin. I will recreate everything that I've remembered so far, and then... Maybe the rest will come to me. Maybe. Honey, it's late. And we can do it tomorrow. No, no, I cannot do this tomorrow. I have to do it tonight. Here's that file you asked for, Miss Cromwell. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long. It's not a problem. Thanks a lot. I can't open this, Wade. Will you read it? Christine Cromwell? Father, Leo Cromwell. Mother, Emily Cromwell. I think it says on the back of the photo. Birth date, June 4, 1963. My dad always said that that was my birthday. It was only when he claimed that Vicky was my mother that he admitted that I was born on Christmas Day. <laughs> Place of birth? Uh, Wilmington General Hospital. You want to hear any more? Why bother? It's obvious, isn't it? Vicky can't possibly be my mother. I was born here June 4th, 1963, and Emily Cromwell was my mother, and she always has been, and it was always the truth. Can you believe that? My father lied to me about the truth. Listen, I think before you jump to any conclusions, we should find out who the doctor was that supposedly delivered you. What do you mean, supposedly? Well, from what I've heard about Victor Lord, he was a smart operator who knew how to cover his tracks. If he wanted to hide the facts about you and Vicky, I wouldn't have put it past him to have this hidden here so that whoever found it in years to come... You mean you think these are forged? Well, they're meaningless unless we can find something else that's concrete to back it up. Like the doctor who delivered me. Right. Wait, my... Here we go. Physician in attendance, D.L. Carey, M.D. Yeah, but how are we going to find him now? That was 25 years ago. You think he is even still around? You never know. 
Let's just ask. Okay. Excuse me. Um, we were hoping there still might be some records on a Dr. D.L. Carey. We'd like to get in touch with him. Well, he's still on staff here at the hospital, and in fact, I think he's on tonight. We could you page him, please? It's very important that we speak with him. Of course. Thank you. Never hurts to ask. Yeah? I'm just not so sure I want to hear the answers. <laughs> I saw Audrey kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Didn't I tell you Al was a PR genius? That photo is going to hit every major soap magazine, along with an article on the plum roll Randy gave me in the show. Yeah, I heard. The detective investigating the campus stalker murders. Audrey, it's not that big a part. Oh, well, that was before I came along. You see, I talked to Randy, and Randy talked to the head writer, and now the part is being expanded to match my talent. I can just imagine. <laughs> Audrey, I hate to tell you this, but you really don't seem like the type who, who would be very convincing as a detective. Oh, well, yeah, it's a stretch, I know. But, you know, with the show's new advisor... I'm what really... advisor? Well, the, the one that Randy hired for me. He is a real-life private eye, and he's going to teach me all about how to arrest people in handcuffs and everything. And it's, it's just so exciting. I cannot wait for my first lesson. <laughs> Merry Christmas, and welcome to Fraternity Row. Oh, thank you. Listen, if this is bad timing for you today, I can come back. No, 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 don't be silly. Now, as a paid consultant, you're entitled to every privilege on the show, and that includes the party here. Audrey, she is just dying to meet you, and of course, to learn the tricks of the trade. I'll do everything I can to teach her everything I know. Good, because that's the only thing I'm paying you for. Okay? Right, come here, honey. Honey, I want you to meet the guy who's going to teach you everything you Wait need to know. This is who I'm supposed to coach? Yeah, do you know Audrey? Well, you're damn right I do, and you can forget it. I'm not having anything to do with this witch. I have no intention of working with you either. Whoa, there. Hey, stop, please. Will someone please tell me what's going on? Believe me, this dame is nothing but trouble. Just like the gang of so-called tough guys she used to run around with. You were in a gang? Listen, this creep doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh, no. Back when I was an assistant DA, I tried to prosecute one of the punks that she ran around with. The kid uh, we caught red-handed on a charge of assault and battery. Should have seen the poor guy that he beat up had to spend a month in the hospital. But little cutesy here wouldn't testify, so the kid got away scot-free. He got away scot-free because he was innocent. Yeah, and I'm J. Edgar Hoover, too. The kid was guilty as hell, and you know it. He never touched that kid. You are the one who slapped him with circumstantial evidence, and he wanted me to go along with it. But I wouldn't sign. You wouldn't sign because you were trying to protect the dude. Listen, he was a good kid. And if you think I'm going to stand here and listen to this, then you're just crazy. No, 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 no. So, hey, so hold it now. It's Christmas time for crying out loud. And we are all professionals here. I'm sorry I did not know about this. Now, Audrey, I'm paying you a lot of money to play the detective. And John, I'm paying you a lot of money to teach her how it's done. Hey. Now, can we all just get through this and have a happy new year? Sure. Why not? You know, John here always said that I would never amount to anything. It ought to be really nice to work with him on a professional level and show him just how wrong he was about me. Don't count on it. I'm afraid I'm going to have to close down for the night. My magician seems to have disappeared. <laughs> as well as my audience. Thanks for coming anyway. Oh, that's it, Michael. Let's go. Come on. Michael, what is it? What's wrong? I'm just thinking about Vicky. She may not remember anything that happened tonight. But Lysander didn't take the time to erase her memory again before he brought her out of the trance. He just snapped her out of it and then he took off. Now she's got pieces of the puzzle and she's going to put them together herself. You're right, and we have no way of knowing what she's going to come up oh, with. But we do. How? You're close to Tina now. You can be my eyes and ears for the Buchanan family. We're not best buddies yet. I'm going to have to take that very carefully. Do whatever you have to do, but keep me abreast of Vicky's movements. If she stumbles on that tunnel, I want to be right behind her. What are you going to do in the meanwhile? Don't worry, I haven't run out of options yet. In fact, I fully intend to pursue one before this evening is over. Am I to understand you have some doubts about your record of birth? Yes, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Well, I can assure you, this hospital keeps excellent records, and very accurate ones, I might add. I'm sure they do, Dr. Carey. We were just hoping that you could confirm them. It's very important to me that I know if you delivered me or not. If I'm the recorded physician in attendance, then I delivered you. I can't tell you any more than that, 
without looking at the file myself. Okay. Maybe this photo will help you remember. Well, it looks like it was taken here at the hospital. Do you recognize anybody in that picture? Come to think of it, I do. I was just starting my residency. This was one of my first deliveries. It was such a tragic case, too. As I recall, the young mother died a few months after giving birth. Will you please look at the photo again? I need you to be absolutely certain about this. I'm positive. I remember this case. I remember the couple's name, too. Leo and Emily Cromwell. It's remarkable how much you resemble your mother. Her death was such a tragedy. I'm glad to see her daughter turned out to be such a fine young woman. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to know about your mother? Uh, Miss Cromwell? Thanks a lot, Doctor. You've been a great help. Anytime. Goodbye. Come on, be sensible. We can't just pick up and drive out to the cabin tonight. Why not? It's pitch black out there. Now, can't we do it tomorrow? No, no, we can't do this tomorrow. By tomorrow, I may very well have forgotten everything Lysander pulled up out of my subconscious. Look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to make you a deal. I'll... What are you staring at? The photograph. the hall and tunnel. What about it? That's it. The tunnel. That's it. I remember. Oh, Merry Bye -bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Everyone run home and open Bye -bye, their presents. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh. 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 And what can Santa bring you for being such a good little helper? Well, nothing, Santa, but I have this wonderful man in my life, and I just don't know what to get him for Christmas. Do you have any suggestions? Well, how wonderful is he? Well, he's handsome mm. and sexy. Mm. Suave? Yeah, he's suave. Mm. And he has just the right amount of debonairism. Debonairism? Maybe Santa should get you a dictionary. <laughs> You know what I like about him most? His stomach. No. The way he just stepped in here at the last minute and made this a truly wonderful party for all those children. Thank you, Max. It was great. I had fun. Oh, I'm glad to see you smiling again. Did you catch that one kid? <laughs> Please, Santa. I, 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 abs I absolutely love chocolate chips, so, like, when you come down the chimney this year, could you please not eat all the chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> He was adorable, wasn't he? They were all adorable. Oh, yeah. All except for that one overpowering, no-talent Audrey chick. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, do I detect just a note of jealousy there? Jealous? Me? Yes. That little yes. twit head? No. Mm -hmm. I was merely doing my job as Santa's helper. Mm -hmm. There was a long line of kids here waiting to see you. I... Oh, okay. So maybe I was a teeny, weeny bit jealous of her. It was everything that I could do not to yank her out of your lap and dump her on her head. What stopped you? I didn't want to get peroxide all over the floor. <laughs> well, now, that's a sound I haven't heard in a long time. Now I don't have to tell Santa what I want for Christmas. Oh, why? Because I already have my present. Mm. You. Happy and laughing and back to normal again. Now maybe we can put the pain behind us and start thinking about the future. Going 
hidden somewhere. Who are you? What are you doing here? I had a feeling that you would be back. What self-respecting magician would slip away and leave the tools of his trade behind? Oh, believe me, as of this moment, Lysander Clare, magician extraordinaire, is retired. I will hang up my cloak and put my rabbit out to pasture. Now, you are not retiring. I have another job for you to perform. And don't give a thought to refusing me, because I won't take no for an answer. Oh, dear. All my life, I accepted the fact that my mother was dead, and I'd never know anything about her but what my father told me, and I never wished for anything more than that. You know, so why did he lie to me and tell me that Vicky's my mother? Why did he want to take away my own mother and replace her with Vicky? Why did he lie to Vicky and tell her that I was her real daughter? Maybe he didn't lie to Vicky. Or you. This all might still be true. Wait, what are you talking about? You heard what the doctor said. You read the records. Yes, I did. But like I told you, Victor Lord was a very thorough man. He may have convinced Dr. Carey to stick to this story. The same way he talked Larry Wolek into never telling the truth to Vicky about her past. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Victor Lord had that much power over people. Well, he owned half a land view. That gave him the power. Well, we're in Wilmington now, and from what I've seen and from what I've heard, my father came into this town for the sole purpose of lying to me and to manipulate me, and I'm going to find out why. Where are you going now? Um, we're going to get some answers from the only person who has them all. I remember. It wasn't a dream at all. It really happened. I was running across an open field, away from my father. I was running toward a place hidden deep in the mountain. Where in the mountain? I don't know. But it was near the cabin. I remember that. What sort of place was it? It was a tunnel. It was a long, dark tunnel. You're sure it was a tunnel? Yes, I'm absolutely sure it was a tunnel. I was running toward a tunnel. And when I got there, I, I started to enter it. And then my father was screaming at me, come back, Victoria. But I couldn't stop. No matter what, I knew I had to get to the other end of the tunnel. Please. 